good people of YouTube, Mountbatten here. Today, Wargaming answered some commonly asked questions concerning the Commander rework. And it's there, there's some interesting answers. I perused through some of these already. Um, it's it's quite a one, two, three, four, yeah, about, about six or seven questions that they didn't answer in their last um, Commander rework update. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go through here, read from the dev blog, word from word, read Wargaming's response, and then give my opinion on that for each question and their response. Link to the dev blog will be in the description down below. So if you want to read it for yourself, which I, of course, encourage you guys to do, you can find that link down below. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get going. Update of Commander Skills Questions and Answers. Commanders, we would like to address several important questions and concerns you've raised about the upcoming update to the skill system. First question, why didn't you conduct a separate test for the new commander skills? That was a question I asked too. We decided to have a closed test and also to share any planned changes with you in advance. This allowed us to get valuable feedback and understand any further necessary steps. Everyone will get a chance to try out the updated commander skill system in the public test for update 10.0, which is starting soon. We'll take advantage of this occasion to test the system's technical stability. A dedicated balance test hosted on a separate server, even if it were week long, would not yield decisive results due to the following reasons. A temporary test is too short a time period to try out the majority of ships and all the different possible builds for them. Test servers rarely generate enough motivation for serious battles to occur. There's no risk of damaging individual stats, and winning does not influence account progress. Both of these are the most important motivators on the main server. Only a small number of players would be ready to stop activity on the main server in favor of battles on the test server, so the sample wouldn't be fully representative. Regardless, for more precise and depth adjustments, we'll need data from the main server. After the release of 10.0, we'll watch player statistics and your feedback, and balance both skills and specific ships if needed. Okay, so, pretty good response from, I mean, not say, you know, it's good as in it's what people wanted to hear, but it's a solid response from them, and seeing their logic now, I do understand why they're putting you on the main server, because, yeah, Test servers, people don't really play too much on there, like the submarine test servers. A bunch of people checked it out, uh, you know, right away and then kind of dropped off. I know because I kept playing and, like, every match was full of bots within a couple of weeks rather than being full of players like it was the first couple of weeks. But the subtest on the main server was much more active. But even then, you know, once the newness wore off, less and less people were playing subs in the sub battles mode. And I guess you couldn't really do a special commander mode. I mean, I'm sure they could in some way, but would it really be worth it? So I understand that. And they did say they had a closed test. I don't know if they mean super testers or like just wargaming staff. And it is true how, you know, no matter what you do in testing, especially with commander skills, people will do crazy things that you didn't think of in testing once they get on the live server. We saw that plenty enough with the CV rework and some of the exploits that were found there. So it's like, okay, if they do it on the main server and they do it quickly, like they, they introduce the fixes very, very quickly, then okay. But... We'll have to see how that pans out, but I still personally, and I think a lot of you guys too, would agree in that there should have been some type of, you know, even if it's small scale, just testing before this goes onto the main server, be it, and they, they, they do say they will have a public test, but I think they said that system's technical stability, they're doing that for stability, not for, um, not for balancing purposes. So, it's like, okay, you're getting that one public test in there but that's it. I think this should have gone through still several stages of public testing beforehand, but I do see their point in that not a lot of, pe not a lot of people participate in public tests in the first place. Okay, why are you making such a big change when the current system works just fine? There are several main reasons for this change. Right now, the majority of ships often only have one effective build. I agree with that. By adding new skills and changing old ones, we want to give players a choice between different and effective builds for different playstyles. 
Some skills are ineffective for certain ships, and others have a greater effect on some classes more than others. Splitting skill, skill trees into classes will fix the situation and will also give more room for future improvements and opportun opportunities for more specialized skills. The old interface was not very comfortable to use, so we're updating it. Additionally, we're adding quality of life improvements, such as a recommendation system. They'll make it easier to choose skills for specific ships and an option to dismiss unneeded commanders in exchange for elite XP. Okay, that, that last point, okay, I get that. But, and the first thing they, they talk about too, majority of ships only have one effective build. That's pretty true. I promise you that out of the battleships that you're running into, like 7 out of 10 of them have a survivability build on. Just about every single BB is running that right now because of HE spam. But that's not because the commander choices are lacking or anything, that's just because of the current meta right now. I mean, I, I still get shouted at for running a secondary build on GK when one of its strength is that it has awesome secondaries, you know? Um, but just about every other BB that I have that isn't the Kerr first or the Shikishima or a secondary BB has a survivability build on, on them. And I get that. I understand that. But in my eyes, that's more of a, a meta problem and more of the type of ships that are being introduced into the game. You know, we're getting yet another, like, rapidly HE spammy ship with the Alston coming out that's, that's replacing the Summers. So, that, I mean, you, you've kind of let that cat out of the bag now with the ships that are in-game. They're already in-game and you can't really do anything. You know, you remove Smolensk from the armory, but Smolensk still shows, shows up in plenty of battles, but that's a different conversation for a different time. Um, some skills are in effect for certain ships, and others have a great effect on some classes more than others. Splitting skill trees into... And yeah, yeah, I get that too, what they're talking about. Sp making a specific tree for each ship. I think that's okay, like, in the concept in and of itself, but then, like, the super cruisers that are a hybrid of battleships and um, cruisers. You're absolutely just removing their ability to, to really build into their tankiness, which is part of the whole point of a super cruiser. So they either need to make a battle cruiser slash super cruiser tech tree too, uh, skill tree too for that. Also, what's this? How's this going to affect the the hybrid ships coming out, the SA and the Tone? How, how's that going to affect them? Are they going to fall into the CV category with their skill tree, or are they going to fall into the cruiser and battleship? You know, because then if they can't build into um, the CV skills, then like their planes aren't going to be able to benefit from benefit from that. But also, if they're in the CV category, they can't build into their base ship. So it'll be interesting to see how that goes. Why have you removed the option to retrain commanders using credits? The option to retrain commanders using credits was removed from the interface, but it is now built into the game and does not require credit spending. The amount of XP needed for training for retraining was halved, and yeah, I pointed that out last time too. They took away the option to retrain for for credits, but it is kind of built in because it takes half of the amount of XP to retrain in the first place now. How much XP is needed to level up a commander from 19 to 21 skill points? This one got reddit, like blowing up right now. It will require 1.2 million XP. Yes, it is a new stage of growth for commanders in our game. You get more uh, simultaneous active skills, but it requires effort to unlock them all. This is the basis of our game, progression. At the same time, it should be considered that commanders with 90 skill points are still strong in battle and do not lose their efficiency with the new system. There's a 5% of elite XP which will be earned by all commanders with less than the maximum amount of skill points will help in the process of leveling up. Yeah, I mean... If you do just give everybody with 19 point commanders, 21 point commanders, you know, you're undercutting the progression system there, but also like people have worked for these 19 point commanders, but at the same time, everyone's starting with uh, 19 point commanders now, those of us that have 19 point commanders, and 1.2 million XP, it, it's a lot, it is a lot, but again with signal flags and stuff now that a lot of higher tier players have just from playing the game for so long, it shouldn't really take that long. And I say higher tier players because if you're a higher tier player, you're more than likely to have a 19 point commander already. So it's a lot, yes. And, you know, if you're like me, I mean, I, I've got a 19 point commander for every single uh, German battleship except for the Koenig. So, like, I'm going to have to go in and grind that on all those commanders now. But it is what it is. 
Atlanta, Flint, Smolensk, and Colbert need additional firing range to be effective, but skills for this are not present in the new system. Why? Yes, these ships won't be able to increase their firing range with skills. We plan to check their efficiency after the skill system updates and then make a decision about changes directly to premium and special ships. However, also thanks to your comments, we've decided to increase Atlanta's basic firing range by 20%, from 11.1 .1 to 13.3 with the release of, of .10.0 thereby welding the skill into the ship. We're planning to improve Colbert's acceleration and deceleration dynamics. Flint and Smolens don't require such a preemptive change, huh? But we will keep a close eye on our, on their combat statistics and implement and implement changes if needed. Smolens got get, because Smolens, you can get that thing out to like freaking 19 kilometers right now. Like it can, it can afford to lose a bit of range. And the, the scary part is Smolens is actually effective at 19 kilometers because of the, uh, the characteristics of the shell. Flint, I don't get. It's literally Atlanta with radar. I, I don't get why they say Flint don't need doesn't need that change. If they're going off of just like um, stats, I guess you, they, I can see how they see that. I still don't see it though. But like, it's literally in Atlanta with the same range and everything, as far as I know. I don't have Flint, but from what I've seen, it, it's literally in Atlanta with radar and like four less guns. So that's a strange comment there. So again, it sounds like they're going to buff the base stats of each ship if their performance is dramatically hit by these changes. So, you know, we'll see where that, where that goes and how quick they are to implement these changes. Survivability skills won't be available for cruisers and thus you're lowering the survivability of big cruisers. Big cruisers are distinguished from standard ones by thicker armor and bigger caliber guns. I'm assuming they're talking about super cruisers. They have a weak spot. Long fires. Yeah, that's everybody speaks about right now. <laughs> this weakness could be bypassed by skills. He wanted to split big and standard cruisers in the new skill system. Big ones will have their strength in armor and shells, but fires will be their weakness. And this is how standard cruisers will be able to counter them. I don't know what game they've been playing, but like everything's weakness is fire right now, except for like CVs and DDs. Everything burns. Yes, light cruisers burn shorter and heavy cruisers do burn shorter too but big cruisers I'm like countering the countering it with, with 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 skill points sure you can put you know um basics of survivability and um fire prevention on there like yeah sure you can have three less fires on you at one point in time when you're playing a super cruiser but i i don't know like you're not you're still not allowing them to build into survivability which is supposed to be one of their strong suits that's why they get used in clan battles so much. And it really is just dumping on every cruiser's survivability as well. I guess they're really going for like the glass cannon effect now with these higher tier cruisers, with these uh, higher tier super cruisers, which, yeah, they do still have their armor, but it's like they can't really build into it now. And it's, you know, it, it's, it's just a change of direction of what the game is now to what it will be after this. So it's a big shakeup. So it's not really wrong, it's just like, you know, they want it to go in another direction while we're all, we're all stuck on it going in the direction that it's going right now. Okay, this is the one that uh, many of you are probably interested in, especially if you watch my channel a lot. Secondary's base builds will now be weaker because you've lowered the accuracy bonus. We don't plan to lower the efficiency of secondary focused ships, but we understand that they'll have a shift in gameplay, very much like with the super cruisers. If previously you could focus fire on one target with increased accuracy, now you'll be able to fight several enemies at once on either side of your ship. And honestly, if you're fighting several enemies at once on either side of your ship in a secondary battleship, like a German battleship, something has gone terribly wrong. By sacrificing some accuracy in addition- SOME accuracy, and this is more than some accuracy. In addition to this change, we're also increasing the secondary's range, so their efficiency will be improved. Tell that to the DDs. Besides, skills for secondary guns now require a few skill points. Yes, because there's fewer skills now. New secondary gun firing ranges in Columbus. Let me take a screenshot of this so I can throw this up on uh, on screen right now. So they have the, the base range and then the range with full build on the right-hand side. So um, the base range for German slash... They have German and French on one side, so it looks like they're going to be the same now. So... Um, the start at tier well start the start at the beginning so tier three is four kilometers through and the thing is like they're decreasing the secondary accuracy of tier like six and below secondaries which would well, actually they're actually no 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 they are 
decreasing them. No, actually, those are staying the same. It's uh, from tier 6 up, because that's where um, AFT gave you that boost to... I'm sorry, not, uh, not AFT. Manual fire for secondaries gave you that boost to accuracy. You're not getting that anymore. So from tier 6 up, you're getting a nerf on secondary accuracy, but a buff in range. Where from well, where, where from tier six down, you're getting just a straight up buff in range, and your accuracy isn't changing. So um, three is four kilometers, four is four point eight, five is four point nine five, six is five point six, seven is six point three, uh, eight is seven point six, nine is seven point nine five, and eight is eight point three kilometers. That's German and French. Um, for others, so all other battleships, tier three, three is three point two, tier four is four. 5 is 4.3, 6 is 4.95, 7 is 5.6, 8 is 6.6, 9 is 6.95, 10 is 7.6 base. That's pretty nice. And with full build, uh, German and French, it's 5 at tier 3. That's pretty far. 6 at tier 4, 7.5 at tier 5, 8.5 at tier 6, um, 9.5 at tier 7, um, 11.5 at tier 8, 9, I'm sorry, 12 at tier 9, and 12.5 at tier 10 for German and French battleships. Um, others, so 4 kilometers at tier 3 again, 5 kilometers at tier 4. Uh, at 5, you get tier 5, you get 6.5 kilometers. At tier 6, you get 7.5 kilometers. Tier 7 is 8.5 kilometers. Tier, uh, tier 8 is 10 kilometers. Tier 9 is 10.5 kilometers, and Tier 10 is 11 kilometers. So all you Montana secondary builds can now have a discount Ohio with this new uh, with this new system. Okay. If a ship's base secondary firing range was higher than specified, it won't be lowered. Also, ship detection range is a limiting factor for secondary battery range. The maximum possible secondary battery firing range cannot exceed the minimum possible detection range of a ship. When gross occur first, you still got freaking three kilometers to go there, bud. We will watch how the updated skills for secondaries will work, and if they won't be effective enough, we'll take measures. Okay, so that's good to hear, but also, like, again, how fast are they going to be to respond to this? Because this could, you know, take some time for them. I mean, they waited, what, almost half a year to nerf MVR finally? It will be impossible to build secondaries focus cruiser. Yes, it is so. Sad Siegfried. Right now, there are just a couple of cruisers in the game that can focus on secondaries. However, for almost the whole class, secondary-related skills won't be effective. If more cruisers like this were to be added, we would consider changes. Well, the problem is one of those cruisers is a research bureau cruiser, the Siegfried, which takes a lot of time or money to research. And... I get that Siegfried's guns are still going to be, you know, great after this, of course. It has, like, some of the most, well, actually, the most accurate battleship caliber guns in the game. But part of what made Siegfried great was having those Mimi secondaries where you could just, like, derp into some ships and just, you know, have fun with it. And the fact that it can't do that now once these changes go live really sucks for Siegfried players that enjoy that and that put forth that time, effort, or money to get the ship. You know... I, I just wish they would make a battle cruiser tab, where you could have a mix of battleship and, and cruiser skills, including secondary skills. You're encouraging long-range gameplay by adding the marksman skill. We understand that not all playstyles will be liked by all players, but many players prefer this type of gameplay. I'd say that right now is very much true. There are suitable ships for it, and we want to support it with commander skills, as it is already done with upgrades increasing firing range and accuracy. There is a choice between different play styles in the game, careful at long range, aggressive at close range, and balanced at medium range. We don't believe that this hurts the game. Choosing a play style does not depend on, on one skill, but on a player's preferences and a ship's basic parameters. Besides, we're also adding new options for aggressive builds. Yeah, that I see. Um, and again, it, it should the game should offer multiple play styles for ships. And not everything has to be a brawler, as much as I play it like one. But, you know... If people want to snipe, let them snipe. Yemi's been in the game since the game went up, so yeah. Will there be a free skills reset? It takes time to try out different builds. In order to let you comfortably try out different builds during update 10.0, skill resets will be free. The mounting upgrades will also be free. The cost of commander retraining will be lowered by 90% from 500 to 50 doubloons. 
Besides, to let you further experiment with Commander Retraining, players with 8 access levels of service record and higher will get 500 doubloons on the first login to the game during 10.10.0. Uh, .10 so that right there, that's, uh, that's 10 free retrainings. There will be 6 special combat missions in 10.0, one for each nation, with more than one full tech tree branch. The reward for completing this mission is 100 doubloons, so that's another 600 dubs. So effectively right there, that's 1100 free dubs. And, oh yeah, right, 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 right there at the bottom. In total, 1100 doubloons may be obtained. This amount will be sufficient to retrain 20 tw 22, <laughs> 22 commanders in 10.0. Okay, so the summary I'm getting from this is that the game seems to be going in a different direction than wh what it is right now. And that could be a good thing or a bad thing depending upon how you like this new direction. Myself and of course everyone else who's been playing this game for quite some time we're very comfortable in the game that we have right now, even as frustrating as it is. Yesterday's video was evidence of that frustration, if you couldn't tell. So, overall, you know, I've, I've said my bit about the Commander rework. I don't really like it that much. You know, if they buff the secondary accuracy of secondaries across the board to kind of compensate for taking away... And, that, you know, of course, this is obviously my biggest issue, being a, a, a brawler. If they do compensate it that way, okay, fine, great. And I understand that some people would like their secondaries to fire on both sides of the ship at the same time, because their secondaries are both sides of the ships at the same time. So my solution would be make a commander skill that allows that to happen. You get like what we're getting in right now, a slight buff to the ship that you selected, but secondaries will still fire on both sides. But then allow us that want to to select maybe a, a different four point commander skill or how it is right now where all the secondaries will try to shoot that one ship meaning that your secondaries on the other side of the ship don't fire let us make that choice don't force us that would be an awesome way of adding in uh, you know more skills and making even more diverse builds you can go for the all-in super aggressive just secondaries blasting on both sides of your battleship or you can go for the more concentrated one like we have right now that i like it's much more tactical in my opinion. You have to make sure that you have all the ships on one side of your ship to make sure that you can get maximum efficiency of all your guns going off at the same time. You know, you have to watch out on the other side of your ship because someone can sneak around. You ain't got no secondaries over there because you made that choice in commander skill. It, it would be a great thing in my opinion if they were to allow that to happen. And it, it just makes sense. Like just make it a second, a second skill. Or another skill. I, I I don't see why they wouldn't do that. And definitely with the battle cruisers, there needs to be a battle cruiser or super cruiser slot, since they are a hybrid of both cruisers and battleships. Right now, they benefit from being able to select both cruiser and battleship skills. But now you're forcing them to take cruiser skills that have to accommodate light cruisers, heavy cruisers, and now super cruisers. I really do wish this would be tested more. I I. I Hope that, you know, they make the right decisions about buffing, you know, all aspects of certain ships. You know, not, not just buffing uh, battleship secondaries, but also other ships are gonna get, that are going to get hit hard by this change. Like ships like the Atlanta and the uh, and the Colbert that really do need the, those, the range on their guns. And other DDs too as well. Um, like the Kavarovsk. If Kavarovsk rank doesn't get uh, buffed, then hmm, that's going to suck to play Kavarovsk. Already has a 13.5 kilometer range in the main guns right now, and then if AFT goes away, little bully. But anyway, guys, that's what I think about this. Again, link to this article is in the description down below if you wish to read it for yourself. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel. We're on our way now to 25,000 subs. Just past 20,000, not that long ago. Again, guys, hope you're having a wonderful Thursday. Hope to catch you guys in the next one.